Hi everybody, it's Sandy and today we are going to do something I'm going to call faux glazed glass. The reason I'm calling it that is that I'm using some gold paints and red paints and everything to create something that's going to be reminiscent of this vase. I found it when I was out shopping and loved it, but it's like 30 feet tall and there's no way I'm going to fit this in my house. But I thought it would be really great for a card background inspiration. So I got out my wooden uh, cutting board and some micropore tape and I taped down and not I did not tape well enough this piece of Distress watercolor cardstock. I'm gonna put so much paint on this that the tapes actually gonna come loose, but I tried you know This is also some scuffed watercolor cardstock. It's been sitting in my room long enough that it kind of got um, Some marks on it, but I'm gonna put so much paint over it I figured this would be a great use for a piece of damaged cardstock um, one of the things I like to do is when I'm doing crazy background things like this is to use the backs of things that didn't work out so well on the fronts because <laughs> when it's thick paper like this you can use the other side of it pretty easily. I'm just going to slather on lots of these Kiritake watercolor paints and I mean slather like as much paint as I can possibly get on and you can see it's pooling up and I'm just mixing a bunch of the different reds and my hand is going off screen to the water jar, if you're wondering where that is. And then I'm going to heat dry it. I'm going to heat dry it in between each one of the steps that I do in this. Some of the heat is going to move the color around so I can push it around and make patterns and things if I want to. But most, mostly it's for the purpose of drying it because I want layers and layers and layers of really thick color. You could do this same technique using probably some acrylic paints or something, but I wanted to see what would happen if I tried it with watercolor because I want those layers of color to show through. And a lot of times with acrylic you end up piling stuff on and you only get snippets of it. I want the transparency of the watercolor to kind of allow all of these layers to just keep surging through as you look from one layer down into the next. And this would be kind of cool even by itself, even with these light colors. I like how this was coming out, but I'm going to keep on, keep it on, and put more layers of paint on this sucker. I'm not putting the gold down yet because uh, I want the gold to be one of like the second to last layer of this. I want lots of this base red to be down at the bottom and to really, you know, kind of hold the whole piece up. So I just keep piling on more and more. I threw in some of the black paint as well, kind of down here at the bottom because I want more layers on top. I didn't want the black sitting on top of all that other color because in the inspiration piece it was more of a an accent, uh, almost shadows underneath of some of those colors, so I just put a little bit of it on there. And you'll see when I dry it, it dries really, really light. All of these colors just keep drying lighter than I had expected. So. I ended up putting more layers of paint on than I thought I was going to when I first started this. The Kiritake watercolors kind of react a little differently than other ones with paint. And I was just talking the other day with Dawn from W Plus 9 because she is like genius watercolorer and I was asking her for some advice on things. So we started talking about these paints and she kind of experienced, and I think I see a little bit of that in this, that the paints almost resist the water. So it's like you're getting this fight back and forth between the pigment and water. And a technique like this one that I'm showing you, it kind of works in my favor because you're getting all of these kind of places where there's all these different resists going on and, and things are mushing back and forth really in an interesting way. So. I put that out there for you. I'm not a pro watercolor at this time by any means, but I, you know, I keep learning and talking to people like Dawn and learning from her is really going to be super helpful. So now I'm going to go back to these gold paints. These are the the gold paints that I, I keep uh, telling everybody about, and I've done a couple of videos with them. We'll link to them at the end, and I'm going to show you just how shiny they get. Because just in this first, just slathering on a little bit, you can see I've got tons of shine. I'm going to add some red over top of that even before I dry it. Because I didn't like how the, the gold looked like globs. I wanted it to look more like threads and strands. And th this red on top is going to allow some of that to sort of start slowly seeping through 
the rest of the paint. And that's kind of my whole thought behind trying to get all this to, to work together. The Kiritake paints, at least they do have in this, the set that I have is the 24 set, I think it's the 24 colors, and they have four reds in there. So I have these four to vary back and forth between as I'm doing this. The smaller sets don't have as many reds, and the there's one monster set, really huge one, and that one has more reds, I believe. So you can do this with all different kinds of colors, of course. And you can try with other watercolors if you want as well. And I'm, I might try this another time with a different type of different brand of watercolor and see what happens. But I kind of really enjoyed how all of these paints in layer after layer after layer and drying between each one just kept building up and building up and building up. Lots and lots of fun. But my tape is starting to let go. This micropore tape doesn't like the combination of all this water and all this heat. But that's the way it goes, right? So I use my tonic trimmer. Yes, I love my tonic trimmer. I have this eight and a half by five and a half one, the smaller one, and then I also have the big mama one that cuts the 12 by 12s. So I, I have both of them on hand at all times, but you can see how beautiful that shimmer and shine is. I have just those threads of gold in some spots. I don't have those big globs, and I love that. Next, to put together the rest of the card, I decided to die cut this, um, these little heart flowers from Simon Says Stamp and put them on the card. So I die cut right through my, my beautifully uh, painted piece. And since this is the watercolor cardstock, it was so easy to pop these little pieces out of there just with my finger. I've used it on, used uh, intricate dies like this on some papers and it's like painful to sit and pop all those pieces out, but this came out really quickly. And I'm gonna pop this panel and I'm using the Precious, my one of my favorite uh, dimensional adhesives. And I'm just gonna tear it because I was in a hurry <laughs> when I was doing this one. You can cut it or you can tear it, it works either way. And what I'm doing is putting it around, not just the edges of the card, but I want it around the pieces that need to be popped. So I want some right next to the flowers and right next to all the edges, because I don't want parts to sag, if you can think about it that way. Like this, these center sections would all sag in the middle since there isn't dimension holding them, you know, kind of popped up off of the paper. And even this little piece, little triangle that goes down in between the flowers down here, needs to be popped. So I've got that in place. And now I'm going to put the whole panel onto a piece of red card base. And I'm using my ATG gun to do that. I get my ATG gun and tape at the Tape Depot. I'll have a link in the doobly-doo for that if you're interested. And look at this panel. Oh my gosh, this is just so lovely. <laughs> I found a spot that started sagging. This corner down here at the bottom and so I'm just going to tuck a piece of, of um, adhesive that I trimmed to fit that kind of little shape right underneath. I, I watercolored a little scrap of the watercolor cardstock with the gold paint only and die cut the small love you die from Simon Says out of that and I'm using my uh, Matte multi medium, a medium multi matte. Oh, I can never remember which order it goes in. Anyway, the Ranger adhesive, which works really, really well. I've got it in a precision tip bottle, and that allows me to put this little teeny tiny amount of glue between behind a teeny tiny little die and get it to stick without a lot of splooge all over the place. Isn't this gorgeous? Oh my gosh, yummy, yummy, yummy lots of beautiful color and shine both and here are the two promise videos one uses spray that was left over from the tags in the right hand video so you can click on either one of those watch more visit my patreon page click on the sandyallnock.com in the upper right in order to get to my blog with lots more information and i'll talk to you guys later